So the most important organelle, or one of the most important organelle, is the cell membrane. So let's look at the cell membrane in detail. This is what it looks like under the electron microscope. And notice there are two layers. So here are the two layers. Okay, The membrane has uh, two layers, the blue layer and the kind of greenish layer. And we're going to explore what those layers look like. So to do that, I'd like you to build a membrane. I've posted on Google Classroom uh, an assignment which you need to print and then build that membrane. So if you build it, then come back to this video and we'll talk about the parts of it. The instructions are clear. It's a three-dimensional model. So take a few minutes, build the membrane, then come back to this video. So you have the membrane in front of you and now that membrane is, is called, or the model that explains it, is called the fluid mosaic model of the membrane. It's called fluid because, like water, it's constantly in motion. And it's called mosaic because it's like a patchwork made of many different things. And we're going to be talking about the things that make up that beautiful membrane that is so important. So we call it the cell membrane or the plasma membrane. The model that defines it is called the fluid mosaic model. And the membrane is made up of an important component, one of many, the first is called a phospholipid bilayer. So if we look at the word, phospho means there's going to be phosphates in the, the molecule or in the membrane, and then it's also got lipid, which means fat. It's a bilayer because it's got two layers again, like I showed you in the first slide. So the phospholipid bilayer component maintains the structure of the cell. Now let's look at the components now. These circles are representing what we call the phosphate heads, and they are hydrophilic. Hydro means water, and philic means loving. So this allows the membrane to mix with the cytoplasm, because the cytoplasm is mostly water. The other component is uh, of the phospholipid bilayer is the lipid components, and that's these tails. They are what we call hydrophobic. Again, hydro is water, and in this case, phobic is hating. And you know that fats, like oils, repel water. And so the inside part of the membrane is water hating, and that's so that the entire membrane doesn't dissolve in the cytoplasm, that we actually maintain the shape or the integrity of the cell, having the hydrophobic component. So looking at it from a large scale, you can see the top part is our phosphates. And you can see, as far as we're concern, concerned, the phosphate contains a phosphorus atom with the oxygens around. And that part is water-loving. Okay? And the role is, again, to allow the membrane to blend with the insides of the cell and the outsides. The inside of the phospholipid bilayer is the lipids, which is water hating. And that is, again, is to maintain the integrity of the cell and not let the entire membrane dissolve into the cell or the cell dissolve into the water. So at a molecular level, here's our hydrophobic tail. It's made of a whole bunch of carbons and hydrogens, which we call nonpolar. They don't dissolve in water. And then the top part is our hydrophilic. We're going to look at the proteins that are within the membranes. But before we do that, we're going to look at kind of an animation that shows the membrane in detail. So this is showing us the fluid nature of the membrane. Um, the membrane is made up of fatty acids. Fatty acids have the phosphate ends and they have the hydrocarbon ends. So you can see it's fluid in nature and the black parts are those long hydrophobic chains. This is an example of uh, the double layer of the membrane. So you can see there are two layers there and we call that a lipid bilayer. So if we're looking at the phospholipid bilayer, you can see the fatty acid tails are the middle part of the membrane and the phosphates are the outside. Once the membrane's all assembled, you can see oxygen and carbon dioxide are small enough that they can squeeze through the fatty acid uh, and the phospholipid bilayer and move through easily. Here's a list of the substances that can freely move through the phospholipid bilayer. We've got hydrogen, sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium, chloride, and water. 
some of those actually need some help to get across, and we'll be talking about, about those later. Now comes the proteins. Proteins are giant molecules that squish into the phospholipid bilayer, and they help with transport. We'll be talking about transport across the membranes, and we need these giant molecules called proteins that help move things across the membrane. So the proteins found within the phospholipid bilayer allow transport. We call these types of proteins integral and transmembrane. Integral means within the membrane, transmembrane means across the membrane, and peripheral means on the outside. So these are some examples of proteins you can see in the pictures, and their functions again are for transport, uh, recognition, cell-to-cell -cell recognition, um, anchoring different kinds of molecules, and many, uh, many of the proteins have some significant functions. So if we're looking at this, uh, just take a minute, see if you can recognize parts of our phospholipid bilayer, and we will try identifying them. All right, if you've taken a minute to look, some of these you will recognize and some you will not. Uh, a is a phospholipid. A1 is the phosphate head. A2 is the fatty acid tail. B is what we call a glycolipid. It has the phospholipid with a carbohydrate chain attached to it. This could be used to identify other cells and recognize them. Uh, C is called a glycoprotein. It's uh, a protein with a carbohydrate chain. Again, it has many functions such as cell-to-cell -cell recognition. Uh, D is part of a carbohydrate that's attached to the protein. E is um, cholesterol. All cell membranes need cholesterol for them to be able to move freely, plus other functions. So that's the cholesterol molecule. F is another protein. Okay, That could be what we call an integral protein. Uh, G is also a protein that is a transmembrane protein. It goes through the entire uh, membrane, and it could be responsible for channeling things through. It's a pore. Um, and that's about all you really need to know. Uh, but if you're interested, the distance between H and I, so the distance of the double layer of a phospholipid bilayer, is about 10 nanometers long. So the functions of our cell membrane is to protect and maintain the integrity of the cell, so keep it together. It's semi-permeable. It only allows some certain substances in and out. It allows recognition and communication between cells, and finally is responsible for the transport of nutrients and water.